Welcome to Savage Tropics Forever. Guys, I don't know about you, but I get these feelings in life. I get these feelings when something big's about to go down. I get these feelings whenever, you know, uh, I'm around good people or bad people. Uh, you know, some people say it's the spirit of the Most High Yah speaking to you. Some say it's a sixth sense. Some people say that it's just your conscience. I say that it's discernment given to you by the Most High. I don't know about you, but I have a tingly feeling up my spine, um, especially today. I think in the next couple days, something big's gonna take place. I don't know if it's another 9-11 coming or it's just some big changes coming, but I have a very, very weird, sensitive, tingling feeling inside of me, just like an anxiousness. You know, and um, who knows what it is? I'm not trying to fear monger. It might not even be nothing coming. That would be fine. But I've noticed this, that there's no more peaceful days ahead. You know, I, those that cry, peace, peace, come sudden destruction. And I believe that peace is something that you can consider a faint cry from now on because I don't ever foresee it coming back. I see more and more turbulent times coming before the Most High Yah returns and besides keeping it set up. And, you know, all we have to lean on is the Word and each other. And that's about it politicians will always lie. They will always deceive and they will always sell you out. Governments will always serve Satan. The world will always be against the kingdom of Yah. And those that love the Most High Yah will always be persecuted. It always has been, it always was, and it always will be until the end of all things are at hand. I don't know what to tell people to give them peace. Except for to trust in the Most High Yah, believe on His Son, sacrifice, and keep the commandments, statutes, judgments, new moons, appointed times, and feasts. So it may be counted or worthy to escape these things which are to come one day. I don't believe in a pre tribulation rapture. I don't believe in a mid tribulation rapture. Heck, I think we'll be here right through the, even the bowls of wrath after the trumpets. Now, does that mean that those that are righteous will be affected by the the uh, bowls of wrath? Absolutely not. That is reserved for the wicked exclusively. But, you know, the trumpets is a wake-up call. If you look at the plagues of Egypt before the uh, exodus of the true Hebrew Israelites, the so-called black man out of Egypt back in the day, um, you know, the Israelites experienced quite a bit of them. And then, toward the end, it was all exclusive to the Egyptians. And so shall it be in the last days. I believe that it will be exclusively, at the end, toward the wicked. But the first beginning of it will affect even the righteous. And I think that it will be a wake-up call to tell all humanity, especially those of us that love the Most High Yon, strive to keep His commandments to be obedient, whether Hebrew or Gentile, such as myself, converted to serve the Most High Yon. I believe it will be such a wake-up call and such a profound instance take place in life that it will make you never, ever, ever want to sin again. And I do not long for the day of y'all to take place, but when it does take place, I think I'll be overjoyed because I will know that his return is very soon. I feel that the trumpets are imminent. I feel like that the next sovereign going in will be the last. Second Esther chapter 12 speaks of eight kings two of which will remain of the end, and if you read that, it pretty much breaks down. It says that the beast, you know, the, 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 the evil thing that come up from the sea that, you know, Ezra's brother Daniel seen was expounded on further to Ezra, and it's the Roman Catholic Church. We too, we, There is two sovereigns that are left, one that is and one that stepped down. You just can't make this stuff up. You know, there is, uh, there's an awakening taking place, politically, religiously. Um, all across the board, I see people from atheism, seeing the flat earth going to scripture, believing on the most high y'all, like that. I see people that were ignorant to the political things going on in our world that all of a sudden are starting to come online. I see people that's never had touched the scripture hardly at all start to just profoundly desire it. I see people such as myself that were sleepers for so many years, all coming online. And it's never been more clear to me than ever that there is a sifting taking place between two parties. There is the wicked and there is the righteous. And, and it's going to be a shock 
to many people, I believe, for one day that they see that, you know, a bunch of these so-called Christians went to the church house every time the doors were open. Didn't make it in the kingdom. I think it's going to be a shocker to see so many people that used to be atheists, used to be Islamic, used to be so-called Jewish. I think it's going to be a shock to them people. I think it's going to be a shock when they see a black Messiah. I think it's going to be a shock whenever the people wake up and see that the Shachanazi Jews aren't the real Hebrews and that the true Hebrew Israelites are actually so-called black men everybody trotted up on. You know, and, and yes, there is a there's a there's two groups of those. There's the super kind and then there's just those that are hate-filled and you have to pray for those. I think it's going to be a shock to people when they see that all these things that their pastor man told them not to worry about is taking place at their doorstep and they never done an ounce, one ounce of preparation. I think it's going to be a shock to people when they see that as Yosef prepped and Noah prepped for that great coming day of all the turmoil that took place in their day, that so it says shall be when the Son of Man returns. And what was Noah doing? He was getting his boat ready, preparing his house for what was to come. Because he was a sign unto his generation. You know, Noah was born white. Lamech freaked out because he thought, he was of the messengers or something because he was born white and I believe that recessive gene passed on to Yapeth. That's why we have white folk like myself today. But he was born a sign unto his generation. And you know, I've noticed all the signs that in Noah's generation, you know, because that is the sign that we're given for the last generation, you know, uh, we look at that and most of the things that was going on in Noah's day are most profoundly taking place today. So I think it's going to be a shock to people when all these things come cumulative full circle one day and the book of life is open before them and they see a reflection of their life, the choices they made, the truths that were set before them and the rejection thereof. I think it's going to be obvious to people why that they ain't going to see the new kingdom come, whether Hebrew or Gentile. The stubbornness of the heart is the reason that the world is in the situation it is right now. You know, to be able to reject Satan is one thing. But to be able to reject self is another and to be able to be obedient to the commandments of the Most High Yah is everything. Is everything, ladies and gentlemen. I treasure this above my marriage. I treasure it above my child. I treasure it above my life. You know, one day if I have to give my life, I hope that it's not because I died of some pathetic disease like cancer. Or, you know, that regardless of all the other ridiculous diseases that's out there that just murders humanity, which I know can all be prevented. But, but I don't want to die from you know, stupidity or being murdered from drunk, some drug dealer or something like that. If I go out, I want to go out in a pile of brass or I want to go out standing for the Most High God and His work. I want to be a defender and upholder of righteousness. And I want to cleanse my life and be set apart so that when I call upon His name, I will be heard. Election's just around the corner. And you know, whether Hillary Clinton goes into office as corrupt as she is, or whether Trump goes into office. You know, we have to remember that the servants of Most High Yah have seen persecution from Nero all the way back to Pharaoh that set up on the throne in Egypt. It's never going to get easier, and it most certainly will probably get harder with time. There's going to be a lot of coming events take place in this world, and if you've not made preparation for it, the number one thing you need to be doing first and foremost is have a heart like a child. Because unless we humble ourselves like a child, we're never going to see the kingdom. I want to be like a child every day and teach them. You know, whether I'm a servant in the new kingdom, the most I can do is just open a door at the temple for the people to come in. And so be it. You know, I just want to be pleasing in the eyes of the most high Yah and show gratitude for the fact that he lets me draw air and live and breathe each and every day. I'm thankful that he opened my eyes in Babylon and I felt that tingling sensation inside and that burning in my heart long ago. And I still feel it at times today. You know, if, if you're not feeling temptation, if you're not feeling persecution, if you're not feeling a desire to serve Most High Yah, it's time to do a gut check. Because, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not a football fan much, but we're at fourth and one. It's fourth and goal. And it's in the fourth quarter, and we've got about 10 seconds to go on the clock. It's all or nothing, baby. You know, I'm going for a two-point conversion. And I hope that your mindset is on the exact same track as that, because the more I travel, the more I think, the more I go, the more 
before I meet people. I see a resounding separation of two groups of people. I just got to see some friends of mine, uh, you know, and I, I got to hear the discernment of their heart. And then I go and I see other people and I hear the discernment of their heart. There is a love for Father, Yah, in most people's heart. There is a desire to be obedient in most people's heart. The others, there is a desire of rebellion. It is always rebellion. It's always lip service. I don't want to be rebellious. I don't want to give lip service. I want to live an example that others would want to get in line and follow. You know, because at the end of the day, I'm corruptible. I am just a man. But I would love to be able in this life to do something like Moses, to do something like Elijah, to do something that turns people so greatly back to the Most High God that it is resounding. Because at the end of days, I've wondered, and this is the last thing I'll say in this video, I've wondered and I've thought and compared you know, my, my thoughts together, is that at the end of the days, I have nothing to give in exchange for my being except one thing belief in the Most High Yah and conveying that and reflecting that hopefully into the lives of millions and millions of people. You know, as many possible people as I can. I want to live to see that great and awesome day when that kingdom comes down from the heavens above. I hope that I can live to see every last trumpet take place, every last bowl of wrath poured out, and every last moment run down on that meter to that very last second in time and the end of days be proclaimed and a new age start. I hope to live to see that day. I hope to live to see the sovereigns of the world bend their knee to the Most High Yah. I hope I live to see the people of the Most High Yah restored again to their kingdom. And those of us that are Gentiles that believe, just like it says in Zechariah, that many will be gathered that day of the Gentiles of the world. I'm just summarizing. That many will be become His people that day that are Gentiles. I want to be one of those people, you know. And I pray I live to see all this take place. Now all the world have to, re, you know, acknowledge, yes, Father Yah, you exist. And your commandments are righteous and that your son is true. And that this world you made, it's flat, geodesic, uh, you know, geocentric, stationary, flat earth. It's not some globe live Satan. I mean, I want to see all these truths have to be acknowledged one day by the world. And I think it'll be a glorious day. Guys, this is Seven Trumpets Prepper. Heading down the road as usual. I love each and every one of you, and I hope we all make it to the kingdom. Pray for me as I'll pray for you that we all may be counted worthy to escape these things to come. Until we see you again here at Seven Trumpets Prepper Channel, stay safe, and I hope you have a most blessed day in Yahushua name.